Thank you, sir, again. Now I would like to invite Dr. Akhtar Parvej to throw its throw lights on, on this topic. May I request uh, Dr. Akhtar Parvej before starting his speech? Let me introduce him, although he is a well known professional all over India. Uh, Dr. Akhtar Parvej is a university librarian at Molana Azad National Urdu University, Hyderabad. Dr. Parvez has about 27 years of professional experience of working in prestigious institutions, both in government and private sector, which includes National Council of Applied Economic Research, the American Center of USIS New Delhi, Bell India International Center, ICRA, and Indian Institute of Management in Dhoor. Dr. Parvez has offered one book, edited eight conference proceedings volume, and has contributed many research papers in journals and books. Dr. Parvez is the managing editor of Journal of Library Management. He is also recipient of many prestigious awards, namely AIMS, AIMS International IRMA Outstanding Management Librarian Award, SRF LIS India Library Leaders Promising Professional Award in 2013, ILA Promoter Award 2002, Best Young Librarian Award 2015 from Indoor Division Library Association. May I request Dr. Parvez, sir, to throw light on this topic? Please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you and uh, happy Librarian's Day to everyone and very good morning to all of you. See, it is indeed a pleasure uh, to be part of uh, discussion where I see so many, uh, you know, uh, 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 so many speakers who have really accomplished in their uh, uh, field. And I'm also very happy to see uh, uh, so many of my friends uh, in the speakers list. So I'll just share my uh, screen with you. And uh, I'll, as uh, I have been asked, I'll take uh, <coughs> Uh, just uh, 15 minutes to, you know, complete my presentation. Uh, uh, you can see my screen. You can see my screen. Okay. So, uh, you know, today's uh, topic is the impact of Dr. Rasarat Raghunathan's philosophy of life in the digital era. So I will be basically, you know, focusing on the five laws of library science which Raghunathan has given. So you all uh, very well know all these five laws. And uh, if you see, uh, then, you know, these uh, laws basically or mainly focus on content and user service. And these laws uh, were relevant yesterday. These laws are relevant today. And these laws are going to be relevant even tomorrow. So if you see the first law, that is books are for use, you know. Uh, today, books could be any document. Uh, any information, content, uh, whether it is print or electronic. And even today, uh, what you see is that performance of any library is judged by circulation statistics as uh, how many books were issued, and especially, you know, when you go for accreditation. So, uh, you know, the librarians have to uh, ensure that they give proper accessibility to information or content, whether it is online or offline. The necessary publicity is done, you know, to uh, publicize what you have in the library. Uh, you have to have a satisfactory set of infrastructure, and the ambience should be such that uh, people are attracted to your library and are able to use books. And the most important uh, in this law, I feel, is that the uh, staff has to be very, very helpful. So that is probably more important uh, than any other thing in this law, in my opinion. The second law is, you know, every uh, reader sees or her book. So as you all know, ri ri readers have uh, diverse interests. And Ranganathan was always, you know, against censorship and inequality of access to knowledge or suppression of freedom of access to knowledge. And uh, he always wanted, you know, that uh, books should be for all types of uh, users, irrespective of his religion or caste or creed, sex, age, etc. And in today's time, you know, uh, we see that uh, it has become more relevant, especially for especially able people, where you know all kind, kinds of exceptions are available in the library, uh, where you know we can always help our especially able people. And uh, if we do not have anything, probably see, we should ensure that we get such things from other institutions. Uh, and uh, as you all know, interlibrary loan is one uh, thing which we 
uh, frequently do. So the third law is uh, every book is reader, and you know, uh, as you all know, uh, books are meant for readers, not for filling stack rooms. And uh, readers sometimes, you know, may not know which uh, book may be uh, of their use. The book which he or she may be searching may not be available in your library. Mm -hmm. So it is the librarian's job, you know, to give him or her the alternative to those books. So that is very, very important. And the uh, librarian has to bring uh, the books and the librarian in contact with each other. And for that, you know, what is important is that see, we have a policy in place uh, for book selection. We have to do proper cataloging and the quality of cataloging records should be good so that, you know, they are actually able to see books in a particular area. And as in the first law, you know, publicity of what you have is very, very important. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, essence of third law. The fourth law, you know, if we see that uh, save the time of the reader, and I always feel that this is uh, one of the most uh, important law Ranganathan mm -hmm. has given, and especially in today's time. So, uh, you know, uh, you have to provide easy access to uh, uh, your uh, documents that you have in the library in terms of access points. So you have to uh, do proper classification, cataloging, and I feel that, you know, there should not be too much obsession with the traditional cataloging system because sometimes it may uh, prove to be counterproductive. So wherever possible, you know, uh, we should uh, give uh, the access points. Just, just for example, you know, uh, in cataloging, what we do, we just uh, see if there are three, more than three authors to be used at all. But in my opinion, you know, uh, Mark 21 provides that option to us. We can, uh, we should give all the authors names so that, see, if I do not know the third author, or say if I know only the fourth author, I should be able to get my book. So this is how, you know, you can really uh, make an effort to save the time of the reader. And in the digital env environment, the importance has really increased many folds. And that is one reason why, you know, uh, we have uh, a discovery, we have information integration, uh, like we have catalog, then we have repositories, then we have ebooks, everything to put together. And there should always be ease of transaction. That is very, very important. Uh, I see, unfortunately, we see that we uh, in uh, bigger libraries, the, uh, there's, a, there's an issue with regard to the shelving of books. So that I think we need to address uh, so that, you know, we are able to save uh, our readers time. And that is uh, uh, another thing is that, you know, mm -hmm. if readers are not coming really to the library, so we have to ensure that uh, we reach out to them. And there is an old saying that if Muhammad does not go to the mountain, the mountain will come to Muhammad. And in the library's context, or say in the context of the fourth law, uh, this particular saying becomes very, very important. Now, the fifth law, as you all know, library is a growing organism. So libraries, you know, even in the digital era, they continue to grow. And uh, growth in numbers versus uh, number of computers is a thing which librarian has to make a judgment whether, you know, the, he wants more books or uh, the more number of computer terminals. So that I think librarian has to really uh, ensure that uh, uh, there is a proper balance between these two. Uh, you know, weeding out is one process. Uh, historiography is another process where uh, we have to continuously ensure that uh, though the library is increasing, but we have to ensure that, you see, uh, we have sufficient space to keep newer books or books which are <coughs> more. So the digitization is another, you know, uh, thing which we all can uh, uh, go for so that, uh, uh, you know, if there is no space in the library, so we can always digitize uh, uh, important books and the Copyright Act uh, Amendment of 2012 allows uh, this to us. So, you know, the growth of numbers, as you all know, will depend on the kind of services that you have. And for uh, creating these services or for rendering these services, it is important that we have necessary stuff uh, in a library. So today's user, you know, is more important, more informed, unlike, you know, yesterday's uh, user. So when he comes to you, he actually does a lot of homework. So uh, the librarians really have to ensure that, you know, they are able to come up to the expectations of the user. And in uh, institution today, you know, what we see that we see that users are really smart. Uh, so when they uh, come to the librarian, they have uh, already done their basic searches about what they wanted. So you have to be really smarter than them. That's what I feel. 
uh, i would like to just mention you know uh, uh, the first revelation of quran uh, on prophet muhammad and the interpretation interpretation of that revelation was is that uh, uh, it is obligatory for every person to acquire knowledge so there's every person not just every muslim so uh, you know this particular thing is so important that you know this was the first revelation and this was relevant yesterday it is relevant today and it is going to be relevant always so i feel that you know uh, in the same way uh, uh, these ranganathan's five laws will always have relevant and for ranganathan's laws i feel that you know they are more relevant today than they were any time in the past uh, and uh, i see that you know the impact of ranganathan uh, laws uh, is really uh, everlasting and the real tribute to ranganathan will will be that we Uh, at least implement uh, the five laws of library science in the true sense but you know the question is how many people actually implement implement uh, uh, ranganathan's laws in the real sense i think we probably need to introspect and reflect so what uh, we see today is dominance of technology over fundamental principles of library science so i'm not uh, uh, undermining the importance of technology but what is important is that uh, you have to have strong uh, understanding of fundamental principles of library science because if you do not have probably you will not able to adopt technology in your library now i see you know uh, for the last so many years we have been seeing that people talk of technology uh, but you know uh, 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 if you ask them what they have done in their library probably uh, some of them or maybe a majority of them will not able to answer now if you see the quality of uh, uh, catalog records in bigger libraries so it will either be you know poor or will not be up to the mark and similarly you know what we see that uh, the catalog book that we do uh, especially in mark 21 are not standardized and if the uh, catalog is not standardized how can you really uh, participate in a participatory venture like uh, national digital library of india at least you know we should make sure that the you know, catalog records are available with national digital library of india so that you know uh, uh, users are able to see what exists where and here you know the uh, the, the the law of ranganathan that is every reader his or uh, her book uh, becomes uh, quite relevant now similarly you know uh, what we see today is though we talk of integration of information but what if you go to the live uh, website of different libraries so what you see is that uh, their catalog or opac is not integrated with uh, all the information that library has so i can understand then that you cannot uh, you really subscribe to discovery which is very expensive but you know you can always try to make an effort to integrate whatever you have in your library catalog so you know instead of having a separate uh, list of ebooks on your website you can integrate it integrate it with your catalog and similarly you know you can do it for uh, Uh, uh institutions repository and so many other things uh, that unfortunately we do not see uh in our libraries uh, so as i said you know shelving is always an issue and people do not take seriously and and people do not do stock verification because you know if you do stock verification you will be able to know actually what book you have and what which book has been lost and uh, sometimes we see that the user keeps searching for a book which is already lost so unless you do this uh, this kind of maintenance in your library perhaps you know you will not be able to serve your users so i think uh, i as i said you know i always see a lot of people you know uh, going to conferences and sharing their words of wisdom about technology about libraries but if you see their own house uh, it it will not be in order so i think no point uh, you know uh, preaching something which you do not practice so and just for example if you see in this covid time how many of us actually you know could really uh, execute these five laws in the real sense i think we really need to think a lot on these issues it it, it is true that you know uh, various agencies government our institutions they neglect libraries but i think we should not think too much on that uh, we should do our bit whatever is possible and uh, uh, you know we should do serious introspection as to you know what is our responsibility and i feel that you know if we understand our responsibility 
and if we are committed librarians possibly you know we'll be able to bring glory not just to ourselves but also to the profession as such so i think uh, and that really will be the real tribute to ranganathan that we execute execute his laws in the real sense so i think these were my feelings i thought i'll just share with the audience and i, I hope i could really uh, finish on uh, time but before that just let me tell you the last thing which uh, i got from uh, one of the articles where you know it was said that ranganathan's five laws continue to give us a blueprint for our professional values that is as relevant now as they were in 1931 the language may be seen as restrictive but the underlying values inherent in them means they can be continuously reinterpreted for the future and are be so so let us take pledge of uh, you know implementing these five laws so with these words you know i would like to thank uh, the organizers and in particular uh, dr swain and dr sunil for you know giving me this opportunity to uh, present my views in such a august gathering thank you thank you sir <laughs> thank you for your nice presentation and a deep insight into the five laws of library science and its relevance in the digital life